Marcus Aurelius was one of the most respected emperors in Roman history. Considered the last of the five good emperors, his four predecessors were Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, and Antonius Pius. Known for his philosophical interests, stoic personality, and commitment to governing the people, Marcus Aurelius was one of the most impressive figures of his time and remains relevant today. Marcus Aurelius was born on April the 26th, 121 AD, during the reign of Emperor Hadrian, and was baptized as Marcus Annius Verus. His family was of Italian Hispanic Roman origin, and, although financially secure, had no royal lineage. His father passed away when he was only three years old, and, consequently, young Marcus Aurelius was raised by his mother and grandparents. When the Roman Emperor, Hadrian, was on the verge of death, he was forced to choose a successor. Childless, he adopted a senator named Antoninus Pius. Since Antoninus also had no children, he adopted the seven-year-old Lucius Verus as the chief heir, and 17-year-old Marcus Aurelius as imperial prince. Marcus Aurelius changed his name to Marcus Aurelius Antoninus and worked hard alongside his adoptive father while learning the arts of ruling and public affairs. In 140 AD, Marcus Aurelius became consul, a position he held another two times in his life. Marcus Aurelius seemed to have a stable, personal life with few eccentricities. In the year 145, he married Faustina, the youngest daughter of the Emperor Antoninus Pius. Together, they had many children over the years, although some did not live long. The best known are daughter Lucilla and son Commodus. When Antoninus Pius died in 161, Marcus Aurelius and Lucius Verus became co-emperors, ruling the vast Roman Empire together. The rule of Marcus Aurelius and Lucius Vero was a troubled period in the Roman Republic. The war against Parthia lasted until 166, as the fierce Gauls attacked the northern Roman frontier. In addition, Germanic tribes were invading Roman provinces on the Danube. But something unexpected happened. Lucius Verus died suddenly in 169 from illness during a military campaign against the Parthians, leaving Marcus Aurelius as sole Roman emperor. Like many emperors, Marcus Aurelius spent most of his time addressing issues of law, such as petitions and legal disputes, but, unlike many of his predecessors, he was already proficient in imperial administration when he assumed power. During Marcus Aurelius' reign, the first pandemic with known impact on the Roman Empire occurred, possibly contracted and spread by soldiers returning from campaigns in the Near East. Known as the Antonin Plague, experts believed it was a plague of smallpox, although measles has also been suggested by modern scholars. The plague spread to Gaul and the legions along the Rhine River, causing the death of approximately 5 million, about 10% of the empire's population. Still, Marcus Aurelius guided the empire prosperously. The value of silver increased, and the economy strengthened. There is also evidence of trade between Rome and China of the Han Dynasty. Many Roman coins have also been found in India, indicating that the Romans imported Chinese silk through India avoiding overland trade via the Silk Road along Persia. Following the Stoic philosophy he adopted, Marcus Aurelius was extremely careful in the theory and application of legislation. He was dubbed by his contemporaries as a most prudent and conscientiously just emperor. Marcus Aurelius showed ample respect for the Roman Senate and routinely asked permission to spend money, even though he did not need to do so as an absolute ruler of the empire. In a speech, Marcus Aurelius reminded the Senate that the imperial palace where he lived was not his own, but that of the people of Rome. As the most powerful man in the world at the time, Marcus Aurelius could have done anything he wanted, and few had the courage to challenge him on any issue. However, he proved to deserve the power he had. In his reign, the empire was guided by virtue and wisdom. Although he lost children, friends, and even his wife over the years, Marcus Aurelius remained true to his vision of a world ruled by natural and benign intelligence. There was no concept of tragedy in Aurelius' philosophy, but everything happened according to a natural order, and nothing could be construed as tragic. 
Marcus Aurelius devoted much of his military efforts to fighting the revolts in Germania, even traveling alongside the troops to supervise the battles. During the campaign between 170 and 180, Marcus Aurelius wrote his 12 books of meditations in Greek as a source for his own guidance and self-improvement. Aurelius's meditations are his true legacy to the world. The work is a private journal of the emperor's thoughts, written to encourage one to lead life to the best of their ability. Marcus Aurelius elected his son, Commodus, as co-governor in 177. Together, they fought against the empire's northern enemies. Marcus Aurelius also attempted to extend the borders of the empire through this conflict, but did not live long enough to see this mission completed. The great emperor Marcus Aurelius died at the age of 58, on March 17, 180 AD, of unknown causes, in his military barracks, probably in the province of Upper Pannonia, where Vienna, Austria is today. His death is considered the end of Pax Romana, a period that began during the reign of Emperor Augustus and lasted approximately 200 years. It was the golden age of Roman imperialism. When Marcus Aurelius died and his successor took over, the Roman world began an irreversible decline. Commodus had erratic behavior and a lack of political and military acumen. He was unable to hold the reins of power as his father had done. Marcus Aurelius acquired a reputation as a philosopher king during his lifetime. He was praised by the Roman historian Cassius Dio, who wrote, From the early days of Marcus Aurelius as Antoninus's advisor, to his last days as Roman emperor, he was always the same person and did not change a bit. This is how the life of Marcus Aurelius ended, one of the few rulers in world history who understood his role as a servant of the people devoting his life to the personal development and prosperity of the Roman Empire.